have been having some trouble getting my live videos onto the YouTube, but hopefully that is gonna get figured out at some point today. But let's talk about my favorite things first. I'm having such a fun time with it and super excited to share other things with you. And so Monday, we had rocked Crystal Skulls. And unfortunately, I did not know that she was going to be away with no cell service this week. So she's back on Friday. So the code's still good. And I will, you know, send out on Monday another like thing. I'll repost it so you can remember. But if you want to get your Crystal Skulls, you can obviously still send her DMs, but I don't think she's going to be uploading anything new and all of that stuff or responding until she gets back on Friday. So just so you know, I got really excited for that one, but I mean, seriously, 20% 20, 20 off Skulls when they're already at a good price is like, Peony's going to be getting some friends. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So then yesterday we had Leander Witchwood. Witchwood Tea House offering 15% off and Leandra makes my favorite teas and you know delicious sugars and um, So you really can't go wrong there. So I'm super excited about this too. And then today Today We have one of my favorite mug people <laughs> mug creators Earth Love by Danny and Danny is in the York area, so she's local, and she makes these beautiful mugs. I currently have two, but soon we'll have many more because she is offering us 20% off of her mugs for one week. So it starts today. Look at these. I mean, seriously, look, even look in the inside. I kind of want to show you the inside of this, but I want to be careful because I still have some coffee in there, but how beautiful and she also makes um you know like bowls and planners and stuff like that but clearly you know i'm a mug girl so danny is going to be doing that and i will of course be posting her um her day three after this live and putting all the information and the code i think it's like sarah 20 but don't quote me i you know i'm still drinking my coffee so i'll post that after and you can check her out on etsy and we can all sport our Earth Love by Danny mugs and support an amazing, um, an amazing mama local who makes the most amazing mugs. Now, I will say, because I'm a mug crazy person, that one of the my favorite things about Danny's mugs specifically is how thin she makes the handle and the lip. So it's pretty lightweight. So when you fill it with a hot liquid, it just feels really nice in your hand. Um, I have some mugs that have a thicker handle and when I hold them like this, it's kind of awkward. And then if it's filled with hot liquid, it gets a little bit dangerous. So Danny's mugs are perfect for that. I always get a small size because I just don't drink a big cup, but she has bigger sizes as well. So I love her stuff and I'm just mm, so excited. And when it comes, her packaging is so cute. She puts little tags on them. So, um, Danny's working this morning at her other job, but for the replay, we're saying, hi, Danny. We can't wait to buy all your mugs. Let's make her have to restock her store, right? So that is very exciting. I want to tell you about like Thursday and Friday too, but I can't do that because that's not how this game works. So moving on, but so excited. Let me just actually finish this. Well, let's say some good mornings. Good morning, Jean. Hey, Jess. Hey, Joe. Good morning, Jennifer. Linda says, good morning, Linda. Linda says she got her sugar. Hi, Allison. Um, Cindy says she loves Danny. Who, I mean, how can you not, right? And what's better than supporting local and getting an amazing mug, so, or three. Good morning, Christine. All right, so that's that's our update for the giveaway thanks for playing let's talk about new moon things oh thank you okay so actually i was thinking i would add this if it fits and if it doesn't um i'll add it anyway and it'll be 13 days but these are um fennec fennec design and she has that shop, if you're local, she has the shop in the Millworks, and Millworks has just reopened, so hopefully you can get into her gallery. 
um, but it's right down on the main level, right across from the um, from the from the Millworks restaurant itself. But she makes these amazing earrings, and they also have a website, and she often has sales on these earrings, and they're they're really lightweight but just super fun, and she's delightful. So she's definitely one of my favorite things. It's it's interesting and kind of cool. Um, <clears throat> I've only lived in this area since um, 2000. When was Justin born? 2013? We moved here in 2013. Gosh, wow, that's like seven years. Okay, so I was gonna say I haven't been here that long, but that's actually like the longest I've ever lived in a place besides like my home where I grew up. So I guess I live here now. Guys, I'm a central Pennsylvania. Anyway, in the past few years, um, it's been really cool and interesting to see that a lot of the things that I spend my money on now are with local um, local people. And that has never happened before. Like when I lived in Connecticut and New York, that it really wasn't an option back then to, um, you didn't have as many options. There were just lots and lots and lots of big stores um, or, you know, everything's coming in from China because you had like little markets and stuff. So um, I love how in the central Pennsylvania area, there's such a huge supportive community to keep things local and to support local artisans. And I'm so happy to do my part. And it's really no problem because it's what I would want to do anyway, because I mean, look at this stuff. So super exciting. I love it. Um, Definitely check Fennec Design out as well. So, okay, we're talking about new moon stuff. I keep getting distracted. This new moon was a big one, and we are still in Scorpio season. And I, for one, am just really enjoying Scorpio season. But what has your experience been, and what is your experience going to be? We said October was the month of choice. November is you following up on those choices, whatever choices you made maybe making adjustments on them if they're not resonating with you any longer. But it is gonna be really important, and I think I said this Monday, who knows, that as you continue through this month, as we move into December, that you continue every day to choose your experience. And that means do not go on autopilot throughout your day. Do not be reactive, be responsive. This is going to help you to choose the experience that you receive because whatever vibration you put out is what will echo back to you eventually and actually really fast right now. And um, I'm going to tell you a story, okay, because you're my captive audience. So I posted yesterday, I think, about feeling you know, if you feel more comfortable expressing when things are not going well for you than when they are going well for you. And this is something that I have struggled with because in my life, in the past, not right now, thank God, but in the past, I have been surrounded by friends who were not comfortable with me unless I was at a certain volume. And when something would be exciting for me, I would have about 30 seconds to talk about it before they would completely lose interest or they'd just be like, eh, okay, like enough already. But if I was having a bad time, if I had something to complain about, if I had someone to complain about, they were there for that all day long because talking shit about people is just a lot more fun than being excited for me when something exciting happens, right? So that over, you know, how long a period of time most of my life Imagine, and I know this happens to many of us, imagine that you're kind of trained and conditioned to really not express your happiness as much because it's not received well. And we don't even think about it, right? We don't think like, that's really fucked up. Like, what? And we probably participate in that as well. And think about it, if you flip it on yourself, when you have had that response to somebody who's had something really awesome happen, what is that response really? If you look at it, and this is, I'm speaking from how I look at it, if I'm with somebody and they tell me like, this amazing thing just happened to me, right? And I find myself in that place, what I'm thinking is, okay, you know, I'm trying to be happy for her, but I'm having struggles and I don't see, you know, 
why she deserves to have that happen to her when it hasn't happened for me yet. And, you know, I'm struggling here. Like, and she's, she just looks look so easy. It just happened, just, it just happened for her. Like, I guess I'm happy, but like at the same time, ugh, like just shut up about it, right? Guys, this is such a huge thing to course correct. And it's an easy, easy shift. And it will change everything and it will start to heal the way we as women relate to each other, connect to each other, and feel comfortable in our bigness and owning our own powers of manifestation and our own magic. Because if you're surrounded by people who you know will react that way when something amazing happens for you, and you know you are going to react that way if something happens amazing for somebody else, I mean, pull out for a second. What is that? What kind, of a, what kind of environment is that to grow and flourish? It isn't. It's mutual keeping down in a low vibration. It's like this weird unspoken path that we're all gonna keep each other down and be little bitches about everything, right? Because there's a lack mentality and if you have it, that means I can't have it. And that isn't true. That's a device that patriarchy has set into place to keep us fighting amongst each other so that we don't turn our attention inward and expand and create and remember who we are. Thankfully, we are now remembering. And so I bring this to you because something really big and awesome happened for me over the weekend. And I was so excited about it, but I said, oh my God, I can't tell everybody because it's too much. Like, I don't want them to feel this way, that way, this way, that way. And I said, oh my God, Sarah. <laughs> like, seriously? But at least now, when, that, when I have those feelings, I'm like, okay, there's a reason I'm having these feelings. It's coming up so that I can heal it and send it on its way. Because guess what? I am big. I have a lot of energy. I'm super magical. I make things happen. I love my friends. I love my family. I love all of you guys. I want all of you to be full of that same energy and as big as you want to be in every point in time. And it is not something that makes me feel smaller to see you get bigger. That has not always been the case, but I can confidently say that that's where I am today. And that feels good. So let me tell you what happened, all right? In the past, like, let's say 15 years, because I've been married almost that amount of time, I haven't had a piano, but I grew up playing, and I had this amazing um, Russian piano teacher named Mrs. Klebanoff, and she was so strict, and I totally hated her when I was little, because I started when I was seven, because she was like, so, 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 so strict. She's like, elbows out, blah, 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 no nail polish, you know, all those things. But I had Mrs. Klebanoff with me, through my formative years. She was like one of the, um, I was mostly homeschooled, so she was like one of the adult teachers in my life that was always with me. And um, we played only classical, of course, because <laughs> it's like literally all she could even handle. Um, she was like, I don't know what this other stuff is. It's not music, aha, uh -huh, whatever. But um, playing piano, especially when I was a teenager, helped me to tap into my creativity in huge ways. When I was a teenager, I was writing all the time. Like I was big into creative writing, making stories all the time, reading books. And when I would sit down and play the piano, it would just open my brain in a different way. And it was like a meditation. It felt so amazing. So of course, you know, toting around a piano is not something one does. I went off to college, which luckily I had access to pianos there. So I did still play and kept in touch with my teacher. And I think I had like one last recital. And that's when I played for the last time Claire de Lune. So I think I was like 19. Um, and then after that, you know, life happened and I did not play until recently with off and on things. And I'll tell you why that is. When I would go and think about a piano, I would say, I can't afford to pay money for this. That's a frivolous expense. And that was me in my own brain doing that to myself, creating that limitation. So what I would do is I'd go on like Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace or wherever, and I'd find some piano that somebody was trying to get out of their house. And they're like, please take this, it's free. And so I'd pay like $300 to get somebody to move it out of there. They get it into my house and it's such a piece of junk 
that no matter how much uh, somebody came and tuned it, more money, it always was horrible. And some of the keys wouldn't work. That would be what I would do. So then I would play for like a week and I'd be like, Ugh, I mean, you can't even play anything with that. And then I would get discouraged and it would just sit there. That happened two times. So I, I kept getting these beaters, right? And finally, about a month ago, I said, I really, really want to play piano again. I miss it. It's part of who I am. And you know, I'm back into my writing groove again and I feel like it would really help me. And so there is this piano sale at Messiah every year. And if you are ever looking for piano, keep an eye out this time next year because this, found, this Rockley Foundation um, supplies brand new pianos to the Messiah Music Department and then once a year they sell them at a discounted price to pay for the program. So that's what they did this year. And this year you had to make an appointment and I hadn't made an appointment, but I had this dream three days before the sale in which I bought a piano and it was a big fancy one. And I said, you know what, this, I just can't ignore this anymore because it's ridiculous. So I made the appointment and I went last Saturday. Now I had in my budget, specific budget. And it was probably like, you know, I knew it was gonna be some sort of upright small piano. And I was excited about that because at least all the keys would be working and it would be fairly new. So I'm like, this would be great. It doesn't really even matter which one it is. It's totally fine. And what was making me feel excited about it was that this is money that I made myself doing this, working with my people and expressing myself. And I'm going to buy a piano with this magic money. So that felt really great to me. So we get there, this really cute little salesman is talking to me. We picked the little piano it, that we got it. I'm like, okay, this is totally fine. And I said, you know, we're here. So can I just look at the other ones and like touch them? Cause you know, they have like big Steinway grants and little baby grants and all these other ones. And I just wanted to touch them. So <clears throat> I went and started touching pianos <laughs> and I sat down at this beautiful baby grand piano. And it was like, you know, most of them have a glossy patent leather finish. And this one was like this like kind of off black satin like matte finish. And it was just like, oh, so I sat there and I was like, Phew. and the guy came over and he leaned in and he said, I think you really like this piano better. And I was like, naturally, you know, I said, of course, <laughs> are you crazy? Of course I do. And he then basically whispered into my ear, I'll give it to you for the same price. And I was like, one, two, three, no backseas. And so this started happening, paperwork came out and I was just like, what the hell? Like, I, I just didn't even understand. And I wondered if um, he was actually like playing some sort of trick on me that like, you know, there was something wrong with the piano and it was like greatly discounted and he was just trying to make it seem like he was giving me a deal or something. Um, but again, like that wasn't the vibe he had at all. But anyway, I was just kind of, you know, like what the fuck, like, I can't believe this is happening. And then they're like, we'll deliver it today by five. And I was like, what? You're gonna deliver it and like bring it, you know, bring it into my house? Yeah, uh, okay, all right. Sure. So anyway, you guys, I now have in the schoolhouse a like literally the most beautiful fucking piano I've ever seen that I've ever like had the pleasure of playing with on a regular basis is sitting here in my schoolhouse in front of the beautiful blue velvet curtains from the Wellness Collective. And I and I just look at it and I'm like well, let me just tell you first what I said. I looked at it and I said, do you deserve this? And then I was like, shut up, Sarah. Not only do you deserve this piano, you manifested it. You saw it in your dream and you manifested it. You walked into that piano sale with full confidence with your own money that you were gonna buy a piano. And maybe you were being a little humble about it and like, this is all I'm gonna spend, but the universe said, you get to have your baby grand. And instead of me saying, that's too big and flashy, I need to get something that's like less flashy and ridiculous. I was like, no, 
I'm, I am receiving, receiving, receiving. I accept this. I am big and flashy. I like fancy things. It's okay. This is just part of Sarah, right? So I say all this to say, we ask for things, right? We manifest, we go through the work of doing this on a, on a monthly basis, right? We use these lunar cycles. You have to be able to accept what you are manifesting. Let it come to you. Let it come. You're putting out the vibes. You're doing all the work. Don't be so bashful and humble and like hiding beneath a rock that you can't say, come to me, baby grand. Like, of course I, that's my piano. So please listen to my story about this random piano and translate it to whatever it is in your life that you're actually wanting but thinking that you don't need it. It's too much, it's too fancy. I will tell you, would I be having as wonderful a time on a small upright piano? Of course, I would be delighted. But I would be absolutely lying to you if every time I sat at that baby grand, I told you that I didn't feel like a fucking empress, okay? And that makes a difference. That makes a difference. It's the same thing when I drink my coffee from a mug like this, that's made by a magical woman who lives locally. I know when I drink my coffee from this mug, I feel different because the energy is different. It makes me feel special, just like that piano makes me feel special. So find the things, my friends, that make you feel special. Let your vibration rise up. Have fun. Bring joy in. You do deserve it. But I'm using that language because we all understand it. But I would love, I would love to strike deserve from our lexicon. And I'll tell you why. To say that we deserve something implies that somebody else doesn't or that we had to do something in order to be good enough to receive that. And that is programming and it is not true. Just by you being here, you are entitled to all of the things. You don't need to deserve anything. It'd be great if you had an awesome attitude, softened your heart and received the goodness coming to you. That helps but there is nothing you need to do to deserve the amazing things that want to come to you. Chances are you're blocking a lot of it because you're like, I haven't worked hard enough for this or what will you know Susie and Jane think of it if they see me rocking this whatever. Oh my God, right? So as we move closer to 2021, as we finish out this year, remember, if you're bigness, your magnificence, and your glow is threatening to those around you, don't dim yourself. Get new surroundings. Because otherwise, you are repressing what is your natural self, what is your authentic self, and you are restricting your places to find joy. You are shoving yourself down so that you cannot reach all of the things that are waiting for you. So that is what I want to tell you today. Thank you for listening to my story. Um, I'll pull you a card because I was meaning to do that. And after this, I'm totally going to go play some piano. <laughs> People have been asking me, are my kids really excited about the piano? And, um, not really. They don't really get excited about much um, that, you know, that I'm into. Or, like, they don't really love animals. They don't care about animals. Um, they're pretty ambivalent about delicious food. Um, they don't like my music. They sometimes like crystals, but they don't really respect them. So, you know, it's just kind of my life around here, just hanging out with all these boys that are like, Fortnite, Fortnite, chicken nuggets. But... 
I will say that my oldest, Eli, um, has been touching the piano and he actually said to me two days ago, he stood behind me while I was playing something and he said, mom, you're actually kind of good. And I was like, the little Scorpio hath spoken. <laughs> yeah, so that's what's happening. You know, with, with both of those kids, like both of those little boys, I know they're little special magical creatures. I made them. And I know that I can't force them to do anything because when people try to force me to do something, um, I like step on them, they eat them. So I don't really force them to do much with that. I do my thing and um, they do their thing. And when they're interested, I'm here for it, you know? So, you ready for your card? Yeah, Eli is something. Neither of them dole out praises that frequently, so I was like, whoa. <laughs> Ooh, you guys. Um, I feel like, did this come out recently? Or maybe it was for somebody in a private reading. This is, okay, I'm gonna show you this card. I'm sorry, I'm like so chatty this morning, but like this is what I do on here. Um, so it's been so weird lately, like generally like in life, but um, there has been an energy of like springtime lately, right? And it's not, it doesn't really connect with November usually, but I think it's been so interesting to have that spring energy during Scorpio season. Like it's never really happened in my lifetime, but I'm here for it. And so I think it's really interesting that the green witch is showing up. She's number seven. You see that? She's here and she is fresh, new and spring. And we will read her and I'll put this in the restoration Facebook group. If you are not part of it, you can find it by like I don't know, typing in restoration, Sarah Amala or something like that. And you'll find it and you can just pop in there. That's where I post a lot of the things. All right, you ready? When you are pure of heart, the whole world is full of potential. And this is the message from this innocent green witch to you. She is green as in the fresh new shoot from the seed pushing urgently towards the sun. She is green and connected to the earth, flowing with the cycles of nature. She is green in that she looks as much to the natural world for company, friendship, and fulfillment as you currently do to fellow humans. She is your reminder to begin to reconnect to the wild green world, to the fairy forests all about you, to go back to a place where you empty yourself of expectations and stories and knowledge and just admit that in some circumstances and at some times you are as a babe. You are newborn, and in that moment of unknowingness and of admitting and embracing your own powers of renewal, you can finally learn what it is you are here to learn. Be not so certain or so experienced when this card comes to you. Be new, be fresh, be unwise, be unknowing, be innocent, and then the new cycle can truly begin. <sighs> Theory forest, always. So that feels like a super high note to end the live this morning. Oops, I don't know what that is. Really feeling that. Of course, now it is seriously cold, but that means we can make fires and that is delicious also. So I hope you guys have an amazing Wednesday. I will be posting Earth Love by Danny day three, um, right after I get off of here. Again, she's offering 20% off of the mug, so and it's only for a week. I will see you on Friday for the weekend update. I'm sending you guys lots and lots of love. I have a lot of things up my sleeve. I'm super hyper and full of energy, so I'm kind of riding that wave. And I love you and love you and love you. If this has been helpful for you, it would be very helpful for me if you would share. Mwah.